there to kind of give a a representation of some particles going through um, and nothing too crazy but just a kind of basic layout uh, of, of these particles that are going to be passing through our bilayer here so let's go ahead we're actually going to hide our little friend here and let's just grab a sphere I am going to change this to a hexahedron because we're going to do a little bit of tweaking to it I'm going to drop that radius down about half as well. So let's kind of uh, push in here a bit. Kind of line things up. Where are we here? There we are. Okay, so um, I'm going to hit C on my uh, keyboard here and just kind of uh, make this thing editable. Uh, once again, let's uh, just grab our little brush tool here, and I already have it uh, set to about 65, uh, which is okay for now. Um, so I just want to just just kind of uh, mess things up a bit here. I don't want this thing to look perfect at all, um, and you will see why. So let's just kind of kind of make it a little wobbly, a little wonky. A little more organic looking. Maybe kind of push it in a bit. And that I think should be okay for now. So uh, we're just going to call this molecule. And then we're going to go ahead and drop this into a MoGraph cloner. Uh, and we're going to actually just change this to uh, our grid, grid array. Go ahead and put that little puppy in there. Kind of back out a bit here. And just, that's not what I want. Just kind of grab our handles here. Kind of move it outward, upwards. Kind of zoom out a bit here. And then ultimately we are going to kind of populate our scene once again using this MoGraph here. And uh, again, this is kind of a trial and error sort of thing. Placement and size and randomize and whatnot. All right, let's, uh, we're okay with that. We can de definitely add more here, but let's get a, an effector in here. Let's get uh, a random. Where are you? There you are. Okay, so let's turn on all of our parameters here. And before I said I like to zero these out because they default to 50, but I'm actually going to stick with this because we're going to really uh, mess up the positioning of it here. I'm actually going to hide our camera as well. So let's just kind of push it around, just kind of eyeballing it. Nothing too specific. Uh, we do have our scale here, but you know what? I'm going to uniform that. Let's go to our perspective and get a, kind of a better idea of what we're doing here. I think we need to add a little more to our scene. So maybe let's crank these up to four. And uh, so when we kind of use the brush tool to kind of, uh, kind of mess these up a little bit, um, that'll give us a little bit more range if we can rotate this, kind of break it up. So if they were perfectly round, we wouldn't be able to tell. So let's kind of, uh, I think something like that. Position these differently. And uh, I also went ahead, let's turn this on real quick. I also went ahead and created a texture for um, our little friends here, and uh, it's it was the same process. You know, uh, our color had a Fresnel, kind of went with the blue theme here. Um, same thing, Fresnel in our luminance because I kind of really wanted these edges to really pop. Transparency, uh, you know, as we could say, a pretty pretty basic setup here. And then, of course, our environment to, you know, more Fresnel uh, to really bring out that, that rim. And then bump. Uh, I got one single Naki in here uh, 
just because it's got a nice organic feel. And then I cranked the bump 200. And then you can play with this whatever whatever you like. Obviously, you can change uh, this. And then my specular to kind of uh, give it some highlights. So yeah, color, luminance, transparency, environment, bump, and specular. And let's just go ahead and apply that to our molecule here. And, uh, you know, we already have some lighting in here. So right off the bat, you know, if we hit render, our light is going to be, our lighting is going to be affecting these guys. And I kind of don't really want to do that. I kind of want to have separate lighting for these because ultimately these will be rendered as a separate element. So we can have more control over color uh, and every other attribute. Uh, so in our lighting, let's just select our guys here, go to project, and then it already defaults to exclude. So let's just drop our molecule in there. And then same with the, our little blue light, um, because this light is just affecting our bilayer, and that's all we want it to affect. So once again, it looks like I got a little bit of, right? Yeah, we are excluding. I just want to make sure. Um, let's actually turn that off because it looks like I'm still, yeah, let's go ahead and drop our actual cloner in there because that could probably be very well be the issue as well. There we go. Okay, so my bad, but um, we need to drop the entire cloner object in the uh, our exclude mode here and not just the, the single geometry of the molecule. So we could probably just go ahead and remove that uh, from our lighting. And let's just double check. Yep, okay, we're safe. So obviously we want to do it with the uh, our little uh, parent object here. So with that, why don't we, uh, um, once again, uh, no overthinking here with this. We could probably just get uh, a simple light in here. And uh, let's just kind of see how we want this to look. We might want to position our molecules a little differently, but let's just kind of get a rough setup of our lighting here. Kind of move it over here because I kind of feel like we should get a light source from kind of kind of backlighting and getting some better highlighting rim light and whatnot. Um, let's see what this looks like here. And it, yeah, it's it's kind of making these little guys pop a little bit. So I'm kind of curious. Um, I think I might want to change the color just a little bit, just a little warmer, um, since our environment is a little warm anyway. Kind of see what that does. I might even crank that up just a bit. Kind of like that. It's a little too hot. Maybe 115, just to get a little little extra. I kind of like that. Um, you know, and we could try to work in some shadows here. You know, it might make some of those bumps kind of, yeah, it's kind of darkening what we have going on already here. So it's not necessary. Uh, you could definitely play around with it, but... Um, we're not really relying on what the shadows are doing here for our little molecules. So, you know, let's um, just to kind of get a, uh, you know, a sense of frame framing. Let's see what our molecules look like. And we're okay. We got a little empty space here. And, uh, you know, once we get to the, the point, if we don't like something, I mean, we can in, easily in Photoshop or in post just kind of, um, you know, copy and paste some little extras here and there. Um, so let's just kind of see overall how we're doing here. You know, we could probably, so I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Maybe kind of position this in just a little differently. Give us an idea of what we're doing here. Yeah, I think this is uh I think this is looking pretty good. So why don't we go ahead and uh, and uh, in the next lesson, kind of start wrapping our heads around, you know, uh, pushing this towards uh, rendering and kind of getting everything set up. And uh, you know, I, I did kind of go back and I just just tweak these molecules a little bit just to kind of fill in uh, and just kind of move the camera just a, a bit just to get a better framing and you know a better composition. Well, you, what we can do is is we we still see plenty of gaps in here, and if we want to fill those in, we can do that later later uh, in Photoshop, and and we'll get to that um, if we do cross that bridge where we're going to have to fill it in. So, um, with that, let's let's go to our uh, render settings, get everything set up here, kind of have a preset 
I'm doing this at 300 uh, DPI uh, for for prints because that's uh, that's the route that I'm going to be want to take, and I've got 2,500 by 2,000 pixels. Uh, kind of weird, but it's worked in the past. Um, and then you know we're going to save this out as an alpha, so we want to make sure that's on. We have our Photoshop, and then uh, you know we have a, a regular RGB, but we're going to uh, RGB pass, but we're going to want to multi-pass this. Uh, and the reason being is we want to have as much control as possible in the Photoshop process because uh, it's just better control. So I'm going to go to our multi-pass option here and I'm going to go add image layers. And there's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot here that we're using and there's also a lot that we're not. So whatever is not implemented in our scene, we're just going to get rid of. We don't have any of that. We don't have refraction. We don't have any reflection. We are going to have ambient occlusion because I think the ambient occlusion is going to really help kind of fill in a lot of these gaps, uh, a lot of these crevices and whatnot, and, and the in-betweens to really uh, make this thing kind of shine. So let's uh, go to our effects and make sure our occlusion is turned on. Personally, I like to have our contrast just up a, a fraction because, uh, you know, we can dumb that down later in, in the Photoshop process. Um, and then our anti-aliasing, we want to make sure it's at best because we want it to be best. We don't want any uh, any um, any dodgy or shady edges on this thing. You know, we want to keep it nice and smooth and, and crisp. Um, and uh, another thing that I like to, uh, I'm, I'm going to implement just so I have a little bit more control is uh, my RGBA. I want to have that in there because I, I like to pile these layers on. Uh, sometimes you don't have to overkill it too much, but sometimes overkilling it really, really makes it shine. Uh, and, and it's, it's uh, the more the more the merrier. So I, I definitely like to take that route. Um, and then we have everything set up. In our save option for our multi-pass image, you want to make sure multi-layer file is turned on. So once again, I know I said this a million times, but we can have more control um, and we can have those separate layers and it's going to come in as a proper Photoshop um, rendered uh, uh, image uh, with our passes. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and um, see what we're looking at here. I have two folders set up. I have um, our membrane and I have our molecular pass because we're going to separate these out uh, so we can have these individual elements in Photoshop and we can have once again more control over each one. So um, let's go ahead and uh, do our uh, do our molecular pass and uh, you know we can go ahead and turn this off because we're not going to be needing that RGB since we already have our RGBA in our multi-pass image. So uh, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And since we're only doing the molecules I'm going to shut off, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compositing tag to this bilayer. And the reason is, is that I want to mat out this wall. Um, because some of these molecules right now exist within this layer or are behind it, and we want to see it kind of uh, show through. Um, we can ultimately turn it off uh, completely and just not render it. but. I like knowing that these things are going to kind of shine. They're kind of going to be there in these little crevices. So if we do a quick preview here, we'll see. Um, oops, I definitely don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to move it. So if we kind of render out here, you'll see that there's some molecules in there. And even if we turn our bilayer on here and do another preview, we'll see that some of them are kind of shining through. And although they're little tiny little nuances of this stuff, I want it makes me feel better knowing they're there. So I definitely want to make sure that that's kind of comped out. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, and just render out our, our molecule layer here. So go to render, and then uh, we'll let this render out, and then we'll come back and we'll focus on our, our bilayer. And yes, I am going to overwrite that because I did a test. Okay, so now we have our molecules rendered out. So now we let's go ahead and focus on um, our uh, our bilayer here, a little plasma membrane. So I'm gonna uh, just you know we're gonna hide this stuff or get rid of that. We don't need that uh, on anymore. Um, but we are actually just gonna turn these off. We're not gonna take the same route with the compositing tag. So now we have this as a separate element. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that. You know, like I said, I've already got kind of a, uh, um, a pass, you know, a folder set up here. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, 
select that, make sure anti-aliasing is set, kind of double check everything. And uh, yeah, I think we are good to go. We got multi-layer, we are alpha, and yeah. Let's go ahead and render this out. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna go ahead and take these passes, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring them into Photoshop, and then we'll get to, get to play around with uh, images. Um, so let's get going on that, and uh, we'll go ahead and start with our membrane pass that we did. Uh, let's bring that in, and as you're gonna see, let me bring that over here. Uh, as you can see, it um, brought in all of our uh, passes that we, um, we rendered out and what we want to do here is is you know we obviously have an alpha channel that we got to work with so we got to go ahead and kind of like knock everything out here um, we have our our normal RGBA pass we have and then we have all these others on top um, and normally you could work with something like this but I always like to have that extra RGBA layer just to uh, maybe overlay at some point depending on what kind of uh, um, that color and, and contrast and, and kind of look, overall look I'm going for. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of duplicate this layer here and uh, we can go ahead and dump this uh, just so this is editable. And, uh, you know, let, let's go ahead and highlight our, uh, our layer here and kind of get our alpha going here. Let's try that again. And then we'll invert our selection here. So there we go. We've got a, our alpha. Um, we have our diffuse channel. And I'm not, uh, uh, people say there's certain guidelines to kind of follow with these layers, but I, I like to play with stuff. I like to know that uh, there's really no limitation in what we can do. So um, some people like to have this in a specific structured kind of hierarchy for our layers, but uh, depending what's going on, I like to kind of, uh, move these around, uh, but right now we're going to work with uh, how we have this set up. Um, and I'm going to kind of kind of bring this in here, kind of play with some some kind of transfer modes. And I, I know the overall look I want to go, um, but I like to kind of trial and error a lot of this. Um, you know, a little too washed out there. Um, you can't really see what's going on here, but there's a lot of this, as I have this as a color dodge, it's kind of bringing out some highlights here. And why don't I go ahead and uh, just for right now, just put kind of a background image here. Uh, maybe do a gradient. Kind of see how that looks. So you can see how it's kind of making a lot of these highlights pop a little bit. Uh, it's a little too hot right here, uh, but we can control that later on down the line. And uh, this is pretty difficult to see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but we've got a specular going on here. You can see our, our little uh, highlights kind of show up there. So um, no matter how subtle it is, I think we definitely want to have that in there. And uh, we could probably attempt to duplicate that. Um, and I'm just hitting Control-J. So yeah, um, you know, we could try to work with that. That might be a little too much. I mean, we can even just bring it down a fraction maybe the halfway point. And our shadows, uh, a little too heavy, obviously. Um, so we can just really bring down our opacity on that. Just kind of work it in. Mm, that looks okay. That looks all right. Uh, and our ambient, let's see what this is doing for us. Pretty bright, pretty bright. Um, I do kind of like that. Maybe we can just kind of screen this. Um, I kind of like the uh, the brightness we're getting out of it, but maybe a little too hot. Let me bring that down a bit. And then our ambient occlusion. Once again, this is very subtle. Um, we could probably control J, duplicate that. And that's one. This is the second one. So. Uh, it's not doing as much as I wanted to. I think our shadow pass is probably going to give us a little bit more um, on that. But, you know, once again, it's personal preference. Um, let's kind of see here. You know, I kind of like the sheen that we're getting on this. Um, it makes it look pretty uh, kind of kind of a wet, like it's floating around uh, 
and some fluid. So I do like that for right now. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and let's kill our background. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to let's go ahead and uh, just group these here. Group our layers here. We'll just call this membrane. And I'm actually going to duplicate our group here. Why don't we uh, let's go ahead and just kind of uh, just merge this group together. We could probably leave it in uh, the naming convention there. So we're obviously not getting our alpha. So I'm going to go back to um, our alpha here and just kind of knock it out. Uh, some people kind of consider this approach to be primitive, but um, I don't know. It still works. So why not, right? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you know, so far so good. This is a pretty good start. Um, you know, it's definitely, uh, we're getting a lot of these highlights and some of the definition here. Our background ultimately is going to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty dark. Um, but it will still, uh, you know, have a little bit more um, detail in there and just to kind of uh, put it into some sort of uh, uh, environment with a little bit of atmosphere. Um, so yeah, why don't we go ahead and try to... Uh, try to grab our molecules here and just kind of uh, implement that into the scene here. All right, you know what, I'm actually gonna just get rid of that copy. Keep it in membrane. Okay, uh, let's get our molecules, bring those up and uh, go to our molecule folder, open this up, give that a second to load. Okay, cool, and here we have it. Uh, once again, I'm just going to control J, just kind of make a duplicate of this, dump that. And we have our guys here. This is pretty nice. But our diffusion, uh, which is normally our uh, going to be our RGB pass, uh, I'm actually going to. This is actually going to help highlight our uh, original RGBA pass. We'll call that just so we know. So that kind of helps. And then uh, we have our uh, specular. And once again, it's subtle, but you know, we can, we can duplicate this up. Yeah, and our shadow pass. I don't, you know, I, I'm going to get rid of these because I feel that um, these shadow and this uh, occlusion pass is going to kind of hinder what we're, what we're trying to go for here. So let's check our ambient. Ambient's nice. You know, we can duplicate that too. That might be a little too much, but uh, it's a little hot in the forefront here. So we'll just kind of dump that. And same scenario here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just group these. And we'll call it molecules. And just duplicate that group. And then uh, once again, merge these guys. Um, and so we're going to want to choose our alpha as well. You can see that we're uh, we're highlighting it here. Just invert it and do that. Fantastic. Okay, uh, we want to bring these into our membrane file. So um, what I'm going to do here is um, we should be able to... Uh, Let's do that, I think. Um, we want to duplicate our layer, and then it's going to give us the option here in the drop down to kind of plop that into our membrane. So why don't we just do that? And what it's going to do is just bring it over uh, to our, our friend here. And we've got our transparency pass and all of that. So, you know, so far it's looking pretty OK. Um, like I said, our background's a little too light. And since our uh, geometry with our molecules already had transparency on it, it's making it look a little washed out. Um, so why don't we go ahead and try to, uh, in the next lesson, kind of figure out what we're going to be doing for a background, because we really want to make this foreground stand out um, without having to do here. Um, you can see simply before what I did was create a gradient. And, uh, you know, there's many different ways to kind of approach this and, and uh, how we kind of want to uh, create this, this background environment. But, uh, 
you know what what I did is that uh, I created this background and let me just bring this in here and uh, let me just scale it up here I actually created this in After Effects and uh, it's a pretty simple setup it looks pretty bad right now um, but that's because we have more work to do on it uh, and what this is is a, a basic fractal noise setup in After Effects and you can kind of see how I have this set up um, my comp is basically two layers you know I have a, a ramp underneath um, you know with, with a simple color setup you know just kind of you know vignetted with the darks on the outside framing kind of our, our center here and then you know we have a simple fractal noise um, with pretty much to some degree default settings all I really changed was that I put this on the smeary uh, and I kind of changed this uh, to the spline and kind of played with the contrast a little bit and a little bit of our subsettings. I just kind of played around just to get a, a, something that I really liked. And then I basically just rendered out this frame uh, as, a, as, a, as a Photoshop document. So uh, a single frame and then brought that in. And you could probably, you know, accomplish the same doing this strictly in Photoshop, but uh, for me, it's uh, it's quick and easy in, in After Effects. So that's definitely a, um, an approach you can take on that. Now, uh, now we have this, and it doesn't look wonderful, so we need to kind of like tweak this just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna, just going to background. Um, you know, we could probably get rid of that. So here we go. Um, so we have our background layer. Uh, I think what we want to do initially to start off is just do kind of a um, an adjustment layer on this thing here, and uh, just get some levels going. You know, I don't want to crush these too much, but uh, I think we just kind of want to get a hint of some sort of kind of fluidity going on back there. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, um, our molecules are really starting to kind of come out. You know, I wonder if we actually duplicated that, if that would actually do anything. Not much. Uh, it helps a little bit, but, um, you know, I'm just going to actually just stick with the one molecule later for now. Um, we can we can also put other adjustment layers on that, which I'm sure we will at some point. Um, so you know, let's, let's, let's get our levels right and kind of, uh, you know, we don't want that too washed out because, uh, we want our foreground element, the, uh, our little membrane wall here to kind of be the, the center of attention. So maybe just kind of do that. Yeah, I think that'll work. That's not too bad. Um, so yeah, why don't let's, uh, let's just group these up to keep things a little organized. Okay, now that we pretty much have that set up, let's bring this up just a little bit here. Um, now we're in fluid, ultimately. We're kind of sitting here floating around in this tiny micro world. And these molecules are kind of penetrating the wall, kind of going through, maybe bouncing off, depending on, on what's going on with the process here. But uh, we definitely want to get the sense of motion. So, uh, you know, what, what we're going to do is I'm going to control J, duplicate our copy here. And uh, our, under, our copy underneath, we're going, to, um, we're going to actually add some motion blur to this. So um, let's do a motion blur. And uh, you can see our settings here. It's, a, it's kind of a lot, um, but it depends on how fast we want this to have this, you know, how fast it's, uh, it's traveling, the sense of movement. So I think if we, um, you know, I don't think we wanted to make it seem like it's going Mach 3 through this thing, but, uh, you know, just uh, an overall sense of kind of blurriness. You know, I think that's, uh, I think that's okay for right now. And then um, on top of that same layer, uh, I'm going to add a secondary blur, so kind of a Gaussian here. I think we want to keep a little bit of the detail of um, kind of our color information. We don't want to 
blurred out too much. Oh, it's too much there. Uh, just kind of soften the edges a bit. Uh, maybe four. That's okay for now, I think. And we can actually, uh, you know, uh, take our move tool and we can probably just um, actually just move this a little bit just underneath, just a little bit here. And that is okay for right now. I'm going to put molecule motion just so we don't get confused here. Um, yeah, not too shabby. Uh, definitely a little uh, too much. Uh, we can probably afford to bring that down just a bit. Just something like that. I just want to make sure that that roundness, since we moved, is not cutting into here. So I might want to kind of move it forward just a little bit, which is not a bad idea. I'm just kind of using my arrow keys here. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of blur um, to our hero molecules here. So just kind of uh, just soften them up a little bit. motion, a kind of traveling motion blurness down, down just a little bit here. So that's a good start for that. Um, here we're probably we're seeing a lot of uh, kind of these little guys in here. Um, not too keen on this one. So thankfully we are going to actually just take him out. And I'm sure his little buddy here as well is floating around here. Cool. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty good start. I think, um, you know, we could probably group these together. Molecules. Cool. All right. Um, yep. So we got those in there. We got our background. Let's... Um, Let's blur our background just a bit here. Uh, I should probably open him up first, then we can blur. All right, blur, Gaussian. Um, you know, we want to keep some of the definition in there, um, but uh, you know, also keep it um, subtle, organic, uh, and not too strong. And when I say too strong, I'm referring to our, our detailed background because that's, that's pretty potent. That's pretty strong. I think we want to be uh, our design to be a little more subtle. So, yeah, let's um, maybe something like that. That's okay. So we'll do that. Um, you know, and we can probably get rid of this. This is our layers. We don't need to work with this anymore. Dump that. And we've got our membrane here. So um, I think another kind of uh, subtle nuance that we could probably pop in here is uh, is a little bit of um, kind of particles, uh, you know, just little floaties, if you will. So um, create another layer. Um, and why don't we just call these floaties? I like that. Makes me feel like I'm like 12 again. OK, little floaties. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, fill this bad boy up with black. And uh, go to our filters. Let's go to our noise. And this noise is going to kind of help us um, uh, add in these floaties. Uh, it's kind of a weird procedure here, but it, it works for now. Um, you know, ultimately, if you were going to do motion to this, and you could probably do the same thing in After Effects as I did with the background object, was uh, you, you could probably use like a particle effect system to really get some nice, uh, um, some particles, you know, in depth and whatnot. But since we're just doing this illustration, we're going to uh, take this route, um, and we're uh, we're actually going to um, create or uh, add some. Uh, um, some levels to this. Just kind of see. Yeah, kind of breaking, kind of snowy like. Something like that, right? That's pretty okay. Let's just see what that does. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, cool for right now. All right. Um, and we're just going to simply merge. Nope, we don't want to do that then. I 
think what we need to do is do our levels here. One more time, one more time here. Not too many. Not too many. Let's go ahead and um, merge those. Oh, we're doing it again. No, I'm apparently doing something wrong. I've done this a zillion times, but uh, let's do it again. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, adjust proper adjustment layer. One more time. You know, practice makes perfect. Is what they say, right? And I've done this more times than I can count for a good amount of years. So how many times am I going to have to practice till I get it perfect? That is the question. Now let's see if our there we go. Finally, okay. Um, this is pretty good. It's a little too uh, getting quite a bit in there, which is all right. That's okay. Something like that. So uh, we can still do this. Uh, with our setup, um, and I'm actually going to go to uh, pixelate and let's let's crystallize these, and that's just going to kind of randomize our shape and kind of uh, placement of these. Oh, that is pretty heavy, pretty heavy. Let's see if uh, our levels can help kind of balance this out a little bit. A little too much here. You know, why don't we... Um, let's undo that. So I'm hitting Control-Alt-Z and hitting Z over and over to kind of backtrack a little bit here. Um, and once again, like I've mentioned before, trial and error on a lot of this. So that's pretty okay. We already have the screen, fantastic. Once again, pixelate, crystallize. And uh, maybe bring it up just a little bit. Still pretty heavy. Still pretty heavy here. Okay, so let's try to work in oh, a little bit more here. Um, that's pretty all right. Now, once again, try this. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, pixelate, crystallize. Um, let's work with that for right now. Uh, it's okay. We obviously really need to bring this down. Less snow. Okay. Um, good. A little better. Um, pretty rough. Not too much. Just enough to, to give it a hint. Uh, that's cool. All right. And then with that, let's um, kind of pile on some, uh, kind of go through the whole process with the, uh, the motion blur and whatnot. Let's, um, let's maybe work with that. Okay, well, you know, I think what we're going to want to do here is uh, select these two. Why don't we just go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and, and merge these together and then uh, screen them. Let's screen those. So we just have one master layer for our little particles here and uh, attempt to... Uh, go through that same process with our, our, our motion blur. And uh, this is pretty okay. You know, I kind of like that actually. This is, I believe, what we were using before. Uh, let's do that. And uh, same thing, kind of a secondary blur. Add a Gaussian here. A little too much there. Maybe just 
somewhere around there just to kind of soften it up. And then obviously we can just kind of drop this down, drop these down a bit. Okay, so you know we're getting close to kind of just building our our scene and getting it ready to really uh, uh, kind of play with colors and play with um, uh, maybe some lens distortion, depth of field, um, just kind of the overall kind of look we're going to be going for. So uh, yeah, with that, in the next lesson, the process of really uh, really fine tuning this thing. You know, working in uh, some colors, some contrast levels, and um, you know, finally get some uh, some blurs depth of field in there and and really make this thing uh, uh, you know uh, really shine here so let's uh, you know we got some levels on our background already and the backgrounds looking pretty okay how it is now and uh, you know it, as long as we've got our foreground element really showing we don't really need to do too much to this um, but of course we can always do some sort of uh, um, color uh, the color scheme change it up and whatnot but I think we're okay with what we have now um, and so that leaves us with our, our membrane here uh, next and this is obviously our hero uh, to kind of what's going on here so uh, you know why don't we just uh, you know kind of play with some uh, some hues you know a little bit of saturation some levels and whatnot and uh, yeah let's uh, let's get some curves in there maybe. Yeah, let's do an adjustment layer here. Kind of pop this over here, get it out of the way. Bring it up. Just a smidge. Pretty simple basic kind of S set up here on our uh, on our on our curves. We don't want to go too hot on this because it'll, uh, after a while, it'll start kind of washing out. But um, I think we're okay. Don't need to be too over analytical about that. All right, let's uh, close that up. We got an extra one in here, so just dump that. All right, um, maybe work in some. Um, don't want to do that. Some hue. I bring that out a little bit and the great thing about this is we got so much control um, over what we want to do um, you know we can take really any route um, th this isn't really my um, my direction personally to be like uh, hey let's uh, let's finalize using the hue and saturation on the color because I kind of like to do an overall kind of um, uh, overlay at the end just to kind of streamline the look between everything but here I think we can kind of play with a little bit a few degrees back and forth here and I kind of like that you know it's very subtle but it really uh, kind of brings it out yeah maybe 12 that's pretty good yeah I like that it's all about the imagination and of course the client depending if this is for a client or not for a client Ah, uh, that's pretty okay. I don't think we need to worry about any of these levels. Yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, let's drop that out there. Yeah, I kind of like that. You know, maybe come back to this a little bit. Maybe drop it down. Yeah, we just kind of want to watch the highlights here. We don't kill it too much. All right, let's move on and just kind of work in some of these guys here. Um, once again, kind of work in some curves here. Let me get this out of the way. You, you can see working with these curves that really uh, we have so much control over those Fresnel channels. Kind of liking that. Not too much. Same kind of setup, just kind of like an S curve kind of kind of thing here. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm pretty finicky with this stuff. Normally, some people can come in and just do it and then leave, but uh, I don't know. It takes a good uh, 
I just kind of like to look around and see how everything's looking here. Uh, and yeah, this is good. I like this. Um, so far, so good. Um, I am feeling, though, that this is maybe a little too crushed. So I just want to make sure that that's not our... Uh, no, saturation's fine. Curves, maybe a little too much. Cool. Yeah, something like that. And of course, we got our floaties. Um, I think we can we can just leave those as is. And the good thing about this is, um, you know, we can kind of come in, maybe make a new layer. Oh, kind of change this to a white. Find a brush, any kind of brush here. It flows okay. Just kind of, uh, maybe kind of, I don't want that. Kind of just create a couple extras here and there. Not that it matters around here, but uh, you just never know. Kind of fill her up a bit here. The noise is good, but um, when you work with that noise later, layer for little floaties here, um, it doesn't really uh, give you so much control of placement. So uh, in regards to just doing an illustration, we can kind of just plop in a few around here, and then we're going to kind of implement the same process of um, adding in some motion blur, adding in some kind of that secondary Gaussian blur, uh, just to uh, spice it up a bit Yeah, And the um, working these in, working these little nuances in is pretty much limitless. All kinds of goodies we can do to this thing. So we got that. Mm -hmm, it's okay. I don't know. What do you think? I think we're cool with that. Maybe just a little bit more. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, more floaties. Okay, get uh, get our Gaussian going in there, um, and just soften it up just a bit. I don't want to overkill too much. That's pretty cool. It just kind of helps out a little bit, kind of fills it in a bit. You maybe dumb down the opacity, just so it's not uh, too strong. Something like that. See, I'm being finicky again. Uh, but that's good, right? Uh, we can go ahead and uh, group these up. Oops. Floaties. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Not too shabby. Not perfect, but we're getting there. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of play around with uh, um, maybe grouping these layers and then um, just kind of playing around with, uh, you know, just ideas of working with depth of field, lens distortion, etc. And I personally have a little trick of the trade um, that I like to use. So we're going to probably implement that. But uh, just to kind of, um, you know, let's uh, do one of these together. Let's group this. Call this membrane. Uh, just going to make a quick copy. Um, and then we're just actually going to uh, merge all of this together just because I'd like to um, just kind of flatten everything, just kind of take a look at what our options here are. Um, you know, ultimately, you could probably go in here and um, let me open up Navigator here, kind of just, just bring it down a bit. Um, we want to work in some depth here for sure. So, you know, we could have easily rendered out a uh, Z depth pass in Cinema 4D and it's kind of implemented that in, but uh, I feel like I, you, you don't have as much control over that. So, you know, simply since this is an illustration, you know, 
one can come in and just kind of brush in your your blurs, you know, um, just kind of, uh, you know, blur it up here. And uh, this may take, you know, a little, a little longer than usual because you're trying to get the whole thing kind of set up here. You know, uh, you can brush it in. You can simply duplicate your layer, add, uh, you know, uh, for instance, a Gaussian blur to this. Um, really just wash it or blow it out here with, with blur. Um, I don't know, maybe something like that for instance, and then, you know, just kind of a race, uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple technique here and just kind of erase it out. Let's go ahead and bring this up a bit. Drop that down just a smidge. And just kind of, uh, you know, do something like that. You know, and then you can probably create another layer, paint in uh, a vignette so we get some really good framing in here, um, you know, and work with more contrast, more more colors, more, uh, you know, saturation, uh, you know, really play with this, um, you know, uh, and uh, let me, let's just go ahead and group this together, uh, or merge, I'm sorry, merge these together, just, and this is more of a, we're just kind of concepting what we're kind of going for here. So, uh, you know, this, I think, um, you know, we can go ahead and uh, maybe play with some color balance on this. Get rid of this bad boy. You know, do you want to go warm? Do you want to go kind of a cooler feel? You know, I mean, this, there's so much we can do with this. You know, this is almost kind of like a kind of a Jules Verne kind of look to it with uh, these kind of heavy, uh, heavy on the hues here. Pretty, pretty bold look. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot you can play with here. And um, if you got some pretty good working knowledge of Photoshop, uh, there's a lot you can do here. Um, you know, uh, my, my little trick of the trade, you know, so you just try to blend this in here. You know, another thing is too, is you want to, um, check your edges, you know, check your edges on this. Cause since we are kind of like, uh, uh, in fluid, you know, we can afford to really, um, you know, blur up these edges a little bit, you know, and it's kind of fun to go in there and just kind of pick it apart, you know, um, and another thing is, is you're going to want to get probably a little bit more displacement going on in this image. Uh, everything is still pretty linear. You know, it's kind of like a straight line, you know, vertical, horizontal, boom, diagonal across the board. Um, so what I like to do, and this is my cheat. So we're actually going to get rid of that stuff and bring back our original here. So if for any of you that are familiar with, um, with uh, Magic Bullet, they have a great plugin for After Effects and Photoshop that I like to use occasionally, and it really helps bring, well, it really helped bring this image. So um, let me go ahead and just kind of bring that up here, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it's going to really help kind of uh, uh, get the look that we're going for. So, um, you know, once again, we're going to uh, make a, uh, just a copy of this here. And let's just merge it so everything's kind of flat. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring up that magic bullet and we can kind of uh, see what we have to play with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my filter and uh, it's the magic bullet and it's photo looks. And, um, you know, if you do any of this work, it's going to be a little big. I got to resize here, but uh, let's kind of bring it down. And, uh, you know, there's already uh, some presets in here that I've kind of been playing with. And you get a lot, you get a lot of stuff you can play with. So it comes with a pretty good library of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, r regardless, uh, it's, it's good to practice uh, kind of doing this manually without any major plugins. But, you know, if you're really seriously working in a production pipeline, um, 
the, uh, the the photo looks, the magic bullet photo looks really, really comes in handy. Um, and you have a lot of control over you, what you want to go for here. Um, like I said, you get a lot of these um, uh, kind of presets that you can play with, you know, and uh, I think um, they all come with these, the, their, their attributes um, per effect. So, you know, you've got your fill light, um, and I don't think you can see it, but you have a lot of this stuff here. Uh, stock emulsion, uh, special effects is good because, you know, we want to work with some um, uh, kind of depth of field kind of look here. Um, so, you know, we have, we can work with a lot of contrast and exposures, and that's what we're going to want to use ultimately. Um, so, I, you know, let me show you kind of uh, uh, something that we can kind of play with here. So as we know, we're trying to, uh, you know, get this kind of depth of field, kind of this focal area. Um, and I, I kind of like the direction this is going. Um, you know, we have got our lens distortion here. Uh, and, you know, we, we got kind of these, these settings here that can really kind of really give us um, that sense that we're just kind of have this kind of micro eye. You know, we're just kind of coming into this world. Uh, you know, we've got a soft edge to kind of help. Um, emulate our depth of field, you know, without having to get a serious depth pass and kind of go through that whole process. Um, then we can control our blur as well. So I think working with this is a good start uh, to really finalizing our look, um, you know, working with our telecine uh, net here and then our diffusion as well, just kind of softens it up, you know, and considering that we're supposed to be, you know, in, in fluid, this really helps out. Um, so I highly recommend, you know, magic bullet photo looks for something of this nature. Um, and like I said, this is, this doesn't cancel out doing this manually in Photoshop. Um, I, I recommend that we, you take that approach if you haven't yet, just to kind of like work in a vignette, um, and all this stuff. So, you know, give this a second to kind of, uh, you know, it's got to read all the effects and then it's going to implement it into our image. And then from there we can kind of evaluate where we're at. And I, I do kind of like this. This is good. Um, I think I kind of want to work in more of a uh, kind of a kind of a darker vignette here. Um, I think what our best approach would be to probably just create another layer and just kind of mask it out. And the fantastic thing with um, with bringing up this plugin photo looks is that uh, you know you can implement your vignette. Uh, you do have that option. Um, you know, if you want to uh, you go into your effects panel here, uh, you have all of these choices, all of these choices. Uh, go to your lens, you got your vignette you can implement, you have your edge softness, you have swing tilt, lens distortion, uh, your mat, you know, you got gradients and diffusion, um, you know, your camera, your lens, your subject matter, you know, all of this is, uh, is at your fingertips and uh, it is quite the tool. So um, if you're a professional in the field and uh, you work with uh, Photoshop or After Effects or uh, any other programs that you can implement Magic Bullet uh, looks into, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, you know, I think that we're kind of closing into uh, to, to our end here and, uh, you know, like I've mentioned more times than I could probably count, but you have loads and loads of control over how you want this to look. You know, you have as many particles or what kind of background you want to do, what kind of, what kind of look you're going for. Uh, and we could probably sit here all day and we can just keep on going and keep on going. And, uh, you know, we could work with our color balance like we brought up before and we can just completely change everything about this. Um, so that's that's what's great about it. And uh, I recommend that you take time to, to, to really check it out, um, you know, and kind of play around with, with what's going on here. Uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been great. And